Howdy doodle. Thanks, Don. <laughs> I've got Mark Wilson Thomas with me to talk in Telecode. Mark, are you there? Let's see. I sure am, Seth. Whoa. How are you doing? Good. I can't see you. Are they going to put, by the way, this background here is not really outside. Uh, oh. Just FYI. Oh, 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 oh he's going to, that's not, that's not Mark Wilson oh, Thomas. Uh, that would be me. <laughs> that's not Mark Wilson, but he's coming. He's going to come in for a second. There you are. Yeah, here I am. I see you. How are you doing, bud? It's been a while, mate. Really, been a while. But we don't yeah, hang out anymore. Good. What happened? Is it something I uh, said? You just, we just don't talk anymore, do we? Uh, eh? <laughs> I know, but let's talk about this because I think it's important we get to it. AI-assisted development now and in the future. That's the name of this particular segment. Why don't you introduce it a little bit, and then let's get into some things that you have to show us. Let's start with an introduction. Sure. Absolutely, yeah. So I mean, I'm I have the privilege of being on the IntelliCode team, which is part of um, the Visual Studio pro uh, team. And uh, for the last couple of years, we've been uh, building stuff. So a couple of years ago at Build, we brought out uh, some tools that allowed you to um, uh, see IntelliCode completions, which are those magical stars that you see in your right. um, uh, in, in IntelliSense list uh, that help you to get context. Uh, contextual recommendations. Uh, and those uh, worked by basically learning across a huge corpus. Uh, at the time, it was like four and a half thousand GitHub repos of C sharp code. Um, to give you those, those contextual recommendations, we've kind of broadened that out over the last few years to give recommendations. Now we do seven languages in Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code. Um, and we've been previewing a whole bunch of things actually uh, over the last few, few years. And we've got some more of those to show to you today. So uh, all of them have the same thing in common. Common, though. We're all about trying to smooth out those tedious coding tasks, let the machine take the strain, uh, and have you focus on what you want to do. That's amazing. So get your questions in. We're going to go through a couple of demos to make sure you can see what it's all about. But we want your questions. Get them in. I'm seeing them right here. So get them in for Marcus right. and Thomas. So let's start first. Amanda Silver yesterday showed me some cool stuff with IntelliCode and stuff having to do with Teams. Can you mm -hmm. dive into it? Because it was a little fast when she did it. Sure. Well, we're going to take a little bit of a, a more measured and breathing view of that now. Let's do it. Um, and so, you know, when uh, we we produce the stuff that I talked to you about just now, um, the base recommendation system where we're basically looking at huge numbers of GitHub repos, one of the first things that developers said to us was, well, that's all fine and dandy. We're loving those stars. We're loving how they help us to get through the tasks quicker and uh, to learn APIs more quickly. But what we really want is for them to show up for the uh, types that we use every day. Uh, and those aren't necessarily found in um, GitHub repos on the public internet. You know, they're found in our code base, and we want you to learn from the wisdom of our code base too. They wanted their their team's goodness uh, incorporated into the models that we did. So we previewed a little while back a way to get those kind of custom models trained up, um, and uh, it, it works just fine, but it was a bit of a pain to keep them up to date. Um, and we really felt like we wanted to produce a, a much better way to solve that problem. Um, and so, uh, you know, get those models out to everyone who needed them without them having to go through all the ceremony um, uh, of training a model up for themselves. Um, and so with that in mind, we've got something to uh, to share with you all today that Amanda was uh, previewing yesterday. So if you could just uh, roll the video. All right, let's uh, do the first, first one. Demo. Let's do it. Take a look at these great completions that IntelliCode is giving me for this .NET Core base type. Well, that's all well and good. We've been getting those for a while. But what happens when I start working with my own types? Well, now I'm getting great completions there too for this conduit class, which is within my own project. But all I did was open the project. How did that happen? How did IntelliCode know what to do? Well, if I just flip over quickly now to the GitHub Actions page for this project, you'll see that I have a train IntelliCode action. And here it is, and it's created a model and attached it to the repository in question. This means everybody who opens that repository will get the exact results that I was seeing. That's wonderful news. Even better is it only took two lines of YAML to make that happen. You can do the same thing with IntelliCode Completion's GitHub Action right today in the GitHub Marketplace. If you're an Azure DevOps Pipelines user, you can use our Azure Pipeline task, which is also available in the marketplace. So that was deceptively simple. Can you tell us what is going on with that? Deceptively simple is right. Actually, there's a ton going on behind the scenes there. Um, so 
what, what you're seeing there is um, we actually, when we train a model for you, um, we extract the data uh, from your from your code base and we um, extract just the features. I know you're a bit of an ML person, mm -hmm. Seth, so you'll know what I mean when I say features. We extract the necessary features from your code in order to um, pass that off to a, a machine learning model service, which we actually run. And then we hand that back to you um, in, in the form of a model, but we only hand it back to the people who have the right to access it. And that's absolutely important to us because obviously it's your code. You don't want uh, your models to be uh, in everybody's hands. So we make sure that they're kept only in the hands of those who can prove to us that they have access to your GitHub repo. Our service knows how to ask that question and how to get an answer, and we can pass them off just to the right people. So uh, yeah, we're doing machine learning for you, and we're handing you back the results. But that's automatic. So that means that um, when I open that GitHub repo, um, if I'm just a developer on the team and my um, uh, build master or whoever handles my uh, actions pipeline has set this up for me. It just happens and it just works. I just open up Visual Studio. I start seeing the completions that I need. This is, this is awesome. Is it like an artifact in the GitHub repo or what's going on there? No, no, this is actually stored in our service. So um, the, the, the magic really is that um, we actually have some uh, uh, very interesting technology that we call repo attachment that just allows us to query and check whether you have access to the uh, to the GitHub repo in question, and our model will then hand, our model service will then hand you back a model for your repo. If you don't have access, no model for you. <laughs> That's impressive. So, like I saw how you build it. What kind of features is it actually bringing to the team? I'd love to see something about like what kind of things it actually does. What kind of completion does it make? So yeah, the completions here, if, if you've seen our contextual completions before, you'll know that they, they understand your, your, your coding context. So you might well see different recommendations depending on where you are. So um, for instance, if you're in a testing block, if you're in an if statement, and uh, you know the recommendations are most likely to be about things that are to do with tests, you'll th see those things escalated up to the top of the list. Whereas if you're just in an instantiation mode, you might see something different. So yeah, it's very much contextually sensitive and it'll be sensitive to the context that you use in the code to train it. Um, That's awesome. So, I, think I, you mean, have, I think you have a demo on like, cause I watched the next one and I was like, this is cool. Can we roll the next video please? Yeah, uh, let me just uh, give you a little bit of um, uh, a pretext on this one, because what we have here is something that's really about learning live, right, from oh what your team goodness. is doing. So yeah, yeah, we're not kidding. We re we're really going to learn from your code live. We do this locally on the on the local box. We'll talk a little bit more after the demos run. Um, we used to call this IntelliCode refactoring. We call it IntelliCode suggestions now. And uh, yeah, check it out in the video, and let's chat some more. Hi. I'm about to take care of some code review feedback that I received. This uh, selected article variable can be null, so uh, my code reviewer said I really ought to take care of that, uh, so I'll go ahead and do that. A simple null check, but in this particular project, my team has a way of managing things. We always throw a new rest exception here, and uh, this is the pattern we follow. Now, I'm pretty certain I have the same problem elsewhere in this code base, and uh, particularly even in this file. So I'm going to go ahead and look for those locations. I could write a regular expression to look for the places that I need to add this same check, but it's tricky because this variable name will, will change, um, and uh, sometimes the uh, uh, link query here will change as well. So uh, I really need to just um, suck it up and scroll through my code and look for those locations. So I'm going to look for those and it looks like I have another one here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same thing. Now notice that the variable name has changed here. So I'm gonna check for if article is null. And again, insert that code. Now, something has happened here. IntelliCode has spotted that I, I have been doing some repeated edits. Uh, and so uh, I just click on that and sure enough, it spotted another location in my file where I might want to do the same thing. Here it is. And it's found something with, notice completely different variable name here and made a suggestion that is exactly what I want. Isn't that great? So now I'm done working in the articles area and I just go ahead and commit my code to the code base.
Sometime later, a colleague comes along and cracks open the exact same solution in Visual Studio. They're going to go ahead and work on the comments feature area. And they're not really aware of any of the work that I did, but they crack open delete.cs to work on their own method. And they notice immediately that IntelliCode is giving them a suggestion. And uh, if they crack open that location and, uh, you know, move there, they will see immediately that they have a suggestion that allows them straight away to apply the very same pattern change that I made in their location. This is fantastic because it means that the wisdom that I had um, in, in terms of the repeated edits that I collected has been applied and saved away on the repo that they're operating on. Now, how did that work? Basically, what happened was I hit apply and the uh, action saved it in a way that allows anyone who has access to this repo to retrieve that same set of um, suggested actions that I was taking. Uh, so the shared wisdom is being put, pumped around the team so that everyone can stay consistent. And uh, isn't that great? Thanks, IntelliCode. Uh that's uh, pretty amazing. Now, this is different than the first thing, because I thought they were it related. Sure Tell me, like, they're different. And I know we have a lot to go through, and we have a ton of questions, but how are they different? And then let's move on to what's on the horizon. Yeah, for sure. Um, these are different because this is using a technology called Prose, which has actually been around for quite a long time. Um, if you've ever done flash fill in Excel, where, uh, you know, you take a series and expand it and uh, take formula series and expand them, that same technology is, is there under the hood. And, and what Prose does here is it um, is actually tracking your AST as you type. So as you're typing away, um, it's tracking deltas on that AST and it's creating a number of, uh, of scripts as it goes to try and uh, move you from A to B, in other words, from where you started to where you ended up. Um, and it then clusters those things together um, uh, using some uh, clever algorithms that my friends on the pros team have put together cool. um, and, and uh, clusters them together and looks for patterns. When it starts to see patterns emerging uh, that you're doing a repeated thing, it'll immediately start to uh, produce an anal analyzer that will actually look for those suggestions in other places in your code. So it's kind of the analyzer that you don't have to write. That's cool. Um, so I know, I know I'm, I'm like, I'm not trying to, I want to get through the next two things because there's two more things that are on the horizon and let's play them yeah. back to back. Let's start with the first one. Yeah. Can I'm we play that? i a form in Python. I've got some idea what I need to do, but I could use some help. Let's see what IntelliCode's AI assistance provides. Ah, look at that. IntelliCode provides assistance right from a generative model, showing me a great suggestion to complete my line. I'm getting statement completion in an untyped programming language, Python. I'm going to go ahead and add my local variable. And right away, wow, IntelliCode suggested the whole line I needed to write in the grey text. I can accept the code with a single keystroke and just tab through to uh, fill in the blanks. This experience really helps. I'm in the zone of writing code, and I only have to write what's unique to my app. And I can learn the API as I go along if I need to. Thanks, IntelliCode. Let's see what future versions of IntelliCode will be able to do for us when working with those tricky beasts, date formatting and regular expressions. Here in GISPAD, my directory format follows the date format, but what's that format string that I need? So uh, I'm just gonna open up format here and it looks like it's going to give me a little bit of help here um, so I, it looks like I can just go ahead and type the date I'm going to do that I'm going to say uh, May 13th as an example 2020 and yes it's got it right uh, I can just go ahead and select that and get a little confident in doing that let's try again now for the the file and for the file we're just going to use times um, for the formatting here um, and so again we're going to use shared moment And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and put in a time there. And yes, once again, IntelliCode to the rescue. And let's try a regular expression. And here I'm just going to type in a couple of decent file name samples. One more. 
just uh, give a bit of a broader set. Wow, that's pretty amazing. In the future, rocking regular expressions is going to be a whole lot easier. So we just went through two features really quick. Hopefully they'll tell me in my ear if I can stretch a little bit. I want you to summarize those two features as quickly as you can, and let's see if we can take some questions too. Go ahead. So yeah, quick as I can. The first one you saw uh, the results of some work that our team is doing. We've got a great team of data scientists who are building um, some Microsoft, some tech, some specific transformer technology that's uh, an evolution of GPT to uh, specialize in code to allow it to uh, learn from a whole lot less data and to basically make the models deployable in a reasonable size uh, so we can work with those. So that's the whole line completions that you saw there. Um, and as you saw, it's able to produce some pretty great experiment, uh, some pretty great um, completions. Uh, we'd love folks to sign up for a potential private preview. So go to AKAMS WAC VSIC sign up. Uh, and you can sign up with us uh, to be kept up to date with our progress there. The second one uh, was uh, using a, another prose model uh, to do regular expressions and date time formats by example. So all you have to do is show us a great example, and we'll give you some great code. That's really cool. So yeah, I'm that's gonna, what we've I'm gonna, got going on. I'm going to do a rapid fire yes, no question real quick. Uh, do three Shoot. of them. Is it only for GitHub or can you use any kind of source code repository? Right now, GitHub, but we are looking at uh, extending to All more. right, number two, is it planned for Visual Studio Code? It will come to VS Code, yes. Is there a way to generate the IntelliCode model offline? Not at this point. Got it. Well, this has been amazing. We have gone rapid fire. Thank you so much for spending some time with us, my friend. Oh, it's been great. An honor. All right, we will be right back. Thank you.